All right. Well, hello again, all the boys and girls out there on YouTube and watching. John and Ellie of George Beer Views back at you this evening with a special examination. We are looking at Terrapin Beer Company. They are out of Athens, Georgia. I've had many of their beers over the years. Michael, I believe this is your first experience with well, Terrapin. It's the first I can remember, but it is possible I've had one in passing and that just doesn't register. So I, I may have had one. What, okay. What, what's their most famous IPA? What's their, do they have a flagship? Yes. The, the most famous IPA that they make is called the Hopsecutioner and it is everywhere. I think I've probably had that, believe it or not. So I probably had one of their beers, but this is the first stout I've had that they've brewed for sure. Okay. Uh, and that one is the 2017 Wake and Bake, right? They're calling it the WNB, but it's Wake and Bake. And it's a coffee, oatmeal, imperial stout at 9.4%. I don't know what the IBUs are. They don't say on the can. But it's made with Jittery Joe's coffee added. And this is okay. Where, Which is, a, I'm pretty sure Jittery Joe's is a local um, coffee place in Athens. This is what the pour looks like. Okay. It is um, beige and pretty nice. So I'm drinking, you're drinking a stout from Terrapin. I'm drinking an IPA. I've had it before, but it's been a while. Nice pour, good IPA. Appearance there, nice big head. This is the Terrapin Luau Crunkles. It's 6.5% alcohol. The IBUs are not disclosed. It is a passion fruit, orange, and guava IPA. It does say that it has natural flavors added, but they use, I think, five or six different hop varieties in here. And it's more, I wouldn't call it a New England style just based on the appearance because it's very filtered, very clear, but it's definitely more, they're going for more of the tropical fruit flavors with this one um so we'll go ahead and get into it i just wanted to uh read the chat really quick we got whiskey scout in there um blake blake tv is watching says cheers everyone and uh all right thanks for joining us everybody on no notice whatsoever we just decided we would do this uh so go ahead michael start um, okay so as uh, i with, said it's got a beige head and it's dark brown. You can see some light through it, but it's pretty dark brown. And um, the head is, I mean, waning a little bit, but it's still holding up a little bit. Let me get a nose on it. Well, the coffee hasn't faded yet. You can still smell the coffee. The coffee is the lead nose. Also getting um, roasted malts on the nose. That's probably about all I'm getting. Let me take a sip of it. 9.4%. That's getting up there in the ABV. Wow. So. Okay. This is another one of the beers. If you do not like coffee, do not deal with this. Because not only is coffee the lead taste, it does take over your mouth, which I, I like coffee. So for me, this is okay. Is the alcohol at 9.4? Are you picking up on any? No, the, alcohol, the alcohol is masked by the coffee bitterness. Okay. So this tastes like a six or a six and a half percent stout. It doesn't taste like the nine and a half. It's really well masked. But if you, this has some IBUs. I don't know what it is. It has some though, because the, there is bitterness in here. But it, you know, I mean, it could be 60, maybe even a little bit higher. But the and it's and because I do like coffee in my stout, this is um, my kind of stout. There's oatmeal supposedly in it. It may tone things down as it gets warmer. Right now, it's just coffee. With the oatmeal stouts, a lot of times you'll get more of a creamy mouthfeel. Would you say the mouthfeel is mouth on the creamier side? Mouthfeel is creamy. Um, okay. It's just like. I guess what I, the way I would describe this, when we had the um, the one from Founders, remember the one we, with the espresso coffee that was 12%? The, K, the KBS espresso, okay. yeah. This is different kind of coffee. That was more espresso kind of coffee. This is more like your straight, run-of-the-mill, um, how can I describe it? Your straight, run-of-the-mill, very strong coffee. 
you know, you know, coffee comes mild, medium, and strong. This is the strong level of coffee. So like a very dark roast coffee, the the highest end right, of the highest roastiness. And now it's funny, I tasted coffee first. And I didn't get the dark roasted feel. Now you're getting the dark roasted feel behind the coffee. It's real it, this is, it's really nice. Very easy drinking. This would be a dangerous beer, but the problem is if you're not a serious coffee drinker, I think this would turn you off. Okay. Fair enough though. I mean that's because it's a dominant taste, but it's saying that it has stout with coffee added so you're right led into the fact that beside most stouts do create some coffee in them you add extra coffee it's going to have an effect but i'm enjoying it okay well whiskey scout says that he has never seen terrapin well robert i'm pr i don't think you're going to find terrapin anywhere in your area terrapin is a georgia craft brewery they've been around for a while i want to say since 2004 2006 it's been a while now. Um, they have a very extensive lineup. They actually have a, a little brewery at the Braves Stadium, SunTrust Park, and the original brewery is in Athens, Georgia. Um, they do distribute to the state of Alabama. I know that for sure because that's where I grew up, and that's when I first tried Terrapin. I'm pretty sure they distribute to Florida, and I know they distribute um, in North Carolina and South Carolina. So they do distribute – Along the eastern U.S., I don't think they go very far west, though. Um, but they are one of the bigger, I think, Terrapin and Sweetwater, uh, which a lot of people have heard of Sweetwater. And Sweetwater has even better distribution than Terrapin. Those are the two biggest uh, craft breweries in the state of Georgia, to my knowledge. We occasionally can get Sweetwater stuff up here, but it's limited. Right. But, yeah, Sweetwater is the, definitely the, the largest or most well-known craft brewery in the state of Georgia. Um, so anyway, my beer is a lot different than yours. I'm doing the Luau Kronkels IPA 6.5. I have had this before, but it's been a long time since I, I last had it. One interesting thing about this, I'm getting a lot of tropical fruit and New England style aromas, but it definitely looks like more of a West Coast IPA, very filtered, clear, um, nice streaming bubbles. It did pour with like a two finger head, which is dissipated but not completely it's got that little layer of head left behind definitely picking the orange uh orange up on the aroma i would say that that's probably the most prevalent aroma is the orange maybe a little bit of passion fruit i don't know enough about guava to really feel comfortable describing it but i'm sure there's probably some of that on the aroma as well it definitely has a very free aroma and then in the background you're getting the west coast like piney notes on the aroma as well so it's kind of fruity and a little piney but the fruit like i said the, the fruit aromas that i'm getting are definitely more tropical fruit not picking up on anything else really but it smells like a winner it does have natural flavors so they my guess would be they probably added like some fruit juice or something some tropical type fruit juice or orange juice in there but it smells good so cheers john Yeah. Okay. So the orange is the first thing I'm getting. Then a little bit of that passion fruit. It's nice and bready in the center. Some nice white bread character to it. Um, it does have a significant bitterness. If I had to guess, I would say the IBUs are somewhere between 50 and maybe 70, somewhere in that range. Definitely getting up there though with the bitterness. It does have a little bit of that piney West Coast type bitterness, but the tropical fruit is leading the way with the flavor. It's actually pretty well balanced for an IPA. It's not overly bitter. A lot of the West Coast style IPAs are a little too much for me. After one, I want to move on to something else because the bitterness just continues to build as you drink it. This one, not so much. Very fruity with that little bit of pineiness. It's well balanced. Like I said, the 6.5% is non-existent. It's bordering on a session. I mean, this goes down really easily. You could drink a few of these, no problem. The body is extremely light. I mean, it doesn't drink like a light beer, like the PBR that I just had over on Carnival Beer Wednesday on, on Louisiana Beer Reviews, but it, it's definitely not a heavy beer by any stretch of the imagination. Very crisp, clean, refreshing. The bitterness on the finish makes it dry also. 
which to me is a good quality with a beer. Anytime you have a nice dry finish like that, it's inviting, just makes you want to go back in for another sip. So I'm really enjoying this beer. And um, like I said, I would buy it again. I bought the six pack for $9.99, which for craft beer, I think is that's a pretty reasonable price for a six pack nowadays, $9.99. Do you see this wake and bake among the different Terrapin beers when you go around? I've never seen it in the can, but I had I bought the 2018 um, bottle, bomber bottle, and I'm pretty sure I reviewed it. I either did it on a stout Sunday with you guys or I reviewed it individually, but I have had the 2018 Wake and Bake. Um, I've also had another another one from their lineup. They have the Wake and Bake, which is which is its own series. Right. Then they have another one called the Muhu Chocolate Stout, and they have different versions of that. So I've had a lot of their stouts over the years. I'm hoping and, and if, I guess until his kids get older, it's hard for him to travel. My nephew has two sons, one who's four and one who's two. And I guess it's a little bit hard, especially with the two-year-old, to just throw him into the car and drive nine hours to New York. So, I mean, he's not, right. not coming up anytime soon. But once they're out of diapers and probably more under control, they probably will come up and then he can visit. Um, the nine-hour drive coming from there was only made bad because we had a lot of rain on the trip going up and my wife did do a little bit of the driving, which made it easier. But, um, I don't know. Have you ever done any of these long scale trips where you get caught in kind of like torrents of rain, not just, you know, little rainstorms, but where it's almost like it just keeps raining heavy and you're on the interstate with these big trucks and they're blowing water all over you and blowing by and, it, it gets almost scary. <laughs> it does. There's been a couple times where I've been on the interstate and the rain has been so thick that I could hardly see in front of me. So I'll put on my flashers and just pull off the side of the road and, and try to wait it out until it dies down enough to where I can see more than just, you know, inches in front of me. It's it's crazy how, how bad it can get. And when your visibility goes to zero and you're on the interstate with no, it's God knows whoever else and you can't right. see anything, it's, right. yeah, it's, it's, scary. it's really scary. Well, we had, we had the GPS on telling us how to go and it rerouted us out of Washington, D.C. through all the rain because normally you come straight up on 95 and it goes all the way up. And it was so bad, I guess, because of the rain and because of the traffic, it rerouted us across through Annapolis, Maryland, through Baltimore, and into Delaware. And we were on these small little dippy roads. But I guess in some ways we were better off being there because there was less traffic. So it, you're, on, you're on a two-lane road on each side, but there were less cars there, which in, the, in this rain made it easier. You like to follow you know, the lights in front of you. And um, I almost prefer, if it's going to really be bad, Maybe you're better off sometimes on, you know, local road than an interstate. Right. So uh, Joe Biden's dentures says he's had um, Terrapin and he loves their beer. Uh, if you're still watching, JBD, post in the chat, if you don't mind, Sharon, what state are you in? I'm curious because I know a few states, like I mentioned earlier, that Terrapin distributes right. to, but I'm not sure how far west they go so i would be interested to know where you're located uh jbd and then whiskey scout says the muhu is a play on you who i never thought about that but i guess it is because that Muhu's makes sense because that chocolate that, drink yeah Muhu was a chocolate drink right yeah it's a classic chocolate drink that's still around today very popular okay so this is uh confirms so uh vermont okay, so, so i i should look for it here too if he can get it in vermont, see. Maybe i can yeah. get it here somewhere the co-op has never had it to my knowledge but you know new york is not a one-trick pony it, you know it could be around and if i can get it i would buy it hello to you vanessa kitty thanks for stopping by yeah and uh whiskey scout says that he um has had an experience like that on a trip to louisiana Got so bad, <laughs> he had to take a detour because of flooding, yeah. The highways weren't flooding, but it was bad enough that my wife was with me and I kept saying that, you know, if, you know, you just want it to slow up. I don't mind rain. I just don't like it when it's, you know, pelting down so hard and, and you lose your visibility where you can't see anything. 
Right. So it gets scary. So, John, as far as this um, wake and bake goes, as it's warming a little bit, the coffee is not as dominant. It's still there. You can still taste the coffee. The dark malts are coming through more. Maybe I'm getting a little bit more. Maybe I'm even getting a little softness from the oatmeal as it warms, too. Hmm. It definitely has a creamy feel to it as well. Still a coffee dominant beer, though. I mean, um, and you can't taste the nine and a half percent. Tastes like a normal stout. Could be dangerous if you. But I like I like coffee stouts. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I just um... and I'll be interested. The other two are also nine point four percent. The nineteen, the two thousand eighteen, and the nineteen. And they're in a, the can is different on the other one. As a matter of fact, I, I don't want to go looking for it right now as we're talking. But this one has like a little baker guy. I don't know. What would you call the um, – let's see if I can show it to you. The turtle. The, the, it's like a, there's like a turtle on the outside, and he's baking and drinking, I guess. The other one – the other two I have are the same, but it's not the same turtle. It's another um, like terrapin kind of character, I guess, that they also have. Okay. Huh. But yeah, uh, I know they have a turtle. I think another one on one of the beers I've had from them recently, there was like a rabbit on the label. Okay. So it was another animal. And I decided, and I, I told I mentioned this to you before, that I think some people, and I'm not sure this is accurate, sometimes think that coffee can change as it gets as the beer gets, you know, older. But I, yeah, kind of like um like the longer you age something in a barrel, the more barrel presence you get uh, with the beer or whatever that you're aging in a barrel. Same thing with coffee, except reverse. The longer coffee sits in a can or a bottle, the less bitter it becomes, so it kind of mellows out over time. Right, and if you and what they're initially probably trying to get is that bitterness. Now, this, which is from 2017. If we're assuming it's as old, it's from early 2017, this could be four years old, 17, 18, 19, three, well, three, over three, three years, years. over three years old, because we're only in February. But let's assume it's two and a half to three year olds just to pick an average. The coffee's still pretty intense. So, yeah, Joe Biden's dentist is asking, how do you find the bitterness? It, do you think that some of the bitterness has maybe worn off from the coffee or is it, it's, does it still, it's still have a fresh it, coffee it's, taste? It's still fairly bitter, but maybe two years ago it would have been more bitter. It's really hard to do. I'll tell you, after I try the 18 and the 19, I'll have a better comparison to see because those are newer. And they're probably similar recipes since they're also 9.4. They pretty much stay the same with that beer. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, so you should do, I guess, the 2018 next and see if it's a little bit more bitter, and then finish off with the 19, and if the 19 is the most bitter, then that's a... Right, that would prove that the as the beer gets older in a can, the bitterness does kind of fade. But this, fades, still, yeah. this still has to be, just from the feel I'm getting, around 50 IBU. So it is, there is bitterness here. Right. But I like coffee a lot, so maybe I'm an example of somebody who... Um, if you put a coffee stout in front of me, I'm probably going to be prone to rating it highly if it's well manufactured. This is very right. well, this is well balanced too. I love a good coffee stout. Um, you may like them a little bit more than I do, but I the only problem I have with coffee stouts is that certain stouts use the coffee to mask the other flavors in the beer. Either a because the beer is just really not that great of quality. Uh, or B, they, they're intentionally trying to make it a super coffee forward style because there are people that when they drink it, that's what they want to taste is the coffee and only the coffee. Um, but if it's a well-balanced coffee style, which I've had many, uh, CBS, KBS, to name a couple right there that I've had recently, I think I find few companies that do it better than founders when it comes to the coffee stouts because – they're bitter. You get the coffee, but you get the malt character as well, the breadiness. Um, and I find that they're very well balanced. So you're, it doesn't feel like you're just drinking coffee. I've had coffee stouts where I literally 
if you blindfolded me and gave it to me, I would just tell you that I'm drinking coffee. It doesn't even, it gets to the point where it's so overpowering that it doesn't even taste like you're drinking a beer anymore. You're just drinking a strong coffee. Right. So. Well, if I'm comparing this with CBS or KBS, because it's got a little bit less alcohol, they're a little bit higher. Uh, they're probably better balanced and better coffee type stouts than this one. But for what this is, it's very good. Right. Okay. Now, did you did you already give a numerical rating or? I did. But do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Uh, you, you go ahead. I'm giving it a 96. So 96. it's not world class, but it's uh, it's it's a bordering on being you know really. Good. And I won't say it's exceptional, but I'll say it's excellent. Okay. With mine, I'm going to go 94. It's a pretty solid A uh, IPA. It would get a little bit higher rating if it wasn't quite as bitter. Um, and I do like the West Coast. I do like the New England. This is kind of more of a hybrid. You get a little bit of, of everything. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. But for me, that's not necessarily a good thing. I'd rather go really hardcore in the West Coast style and just be like a palate wrecker. Or if you're going to do the pa the um, passion fruit, the guava, and have more of that type of thing going on, then just go all out and make a New England IPA and throw some flaked oats in here, thicken it up a little bit. That would have probably set it over the top a little bit for me uh, and to give it a higher rating. But it's still an excellent beer. I think 94 out of 100 is, is pretty uh, fair for this. And I would definitely recommend it to anybody who likes – Fruity IPAs with a pretty good bitter finish. So, so you're more into you like the straight stuff better than the hybrid where they're trying. Yeah, to I've, I've noticed a lot of IPAs seem to be doing leaning in the you know in that direction where they're kind of doing a cross between a West Coast and a New England style IPA. I, I don't really think you should mess around too much with that because the New England style IPAs are for people who really don't like all the bitterness, but they like the hop character. The West Coast are for the people who love the super bitter beers. So when you start mixing the two together, yeah, since I like them both, I can appreciate it. But for the most part, I think it's best to just kind of do one or the other. Make up your mind, you know? I, I guess I agree with that, even though I've had some hybrids that were decent too. But. Right. Well, and this is excellent. A 94 is an excellent rating. It's just – but that's – you know, I, I'm very – I like a lot of beer. <laughs> so exactly. for somebody who's a little bit more, um, I guess, picky, or, you know, they, they're very specific with what types of IPAs they, they like, which I find that most people are. It seems like people are either West Coast, they love the West Coast or they love the New England. Um, and then, you know, it's one or the other type of thing. So this might throw some people off. Uh, if they're expecting by looking at the label, oh, the passion fruit and the guava and the orange, this is going to be a New England juice bomb. You're going to be disappointed because it's it's more it's more West Coast and piney and bitter than you would expect just from looking at the label. Right. And uh, G JBD here is talking about the Sierra Nevada. Michael's had that. I've had that. That's very not, good. Very good. That would be a good introductory coffee right. stout. I like that one. If I remember right, that's in kind. I I gave that somewhere in the lower nineties, ninety one, ninety two. That was good. That's a good entry um, coffee stout. I'm pretty sure I've I've I well I have had that one, but if I'm not mistaken, they also make a coffee porter, which is even lighter. So if you're not necessarily into the super roastiness of, of a stout and you want the coffee, you could go with the porter offering and get the coffee with a little bit lighter body. Uh, if, if you're, if you're new to the style, if you're new to the coffee beers, that might be a good way to go. John, can you get any collective arts stuff? This is Unfortunately, no, I have never out of Canada, but they brew stuff out of Wisconsin and some of the stuff is really good. Yeah. And that's the one that, yeah, the, the company that Tyler Mansell used to boast about when he was, you know, doing his channel, and he would drink a lot of their beers. They're supposed to be coming to Brooklyn near me and setting up a brew pub in the next couple of years, which would be terrific within walking distance of my house. Assuming now, didn't you have didn't you acquire some of their beers pretty recently? Yeah, the co-op co has been carrying them now. I never saw them. I, I'm going to show you something. I think I. 
let's see if it's here. Of course, whenever I whenever I do this, I don't put it in the right place. It's not here. So I can't show it. But I can show you something else while I'm at it. They had they had a hazy um, IPA at the co-op that they were selling. And I must have put it with all my beers in there. I'm not going to go start looking. I went in the refrigerator. Let me ask you, you have you ever had the Ballantine? No. This is the never got Ballantine beer. beer you, ever, you ever see this? It's it's wonderful. Now you've had this one, I think. Have you had this one from Boulevard? The whiskey stout. Yes, that's the one that I told you is, is one of the best barrel aged stouts I've ever had. I think I gave it a ninety eight or ninety nine. It is. It's not for the faint of heart. It's very high alcohol and it's got a ton of of barrel presence. But if you Love barrel aged stuff, which I know you do when I'm talking to the viewers out there. If you love barrel aged stuff and you can get Boulevard beers in your area, then you need to check them out because they are among the best, in my opinion. And I know our buddy Jeremy, who's just now figuring out that we're live here. Jeremy, if I'm not mistaken, gets a lot of the Boulevard beers in his area because they're not too well. Jeremy's in Arkansas, um, and they're from Boulevard. Kansas City. Boulevard is Kansas, yeah. So, John, not can, too far. can you get this? This is from the, you know, they used to be all tech. Now I think they just call Kentucky. And this is their pumpkin barrel aged. Have you seen this? Are we frozen? <laughs> no, maybe we're not. Maybe we are. Have we frozen? Let's see. Jeremy, if you can hear me, I'm not sure you can. John has left, and hopefully he can. He, it was on his channel, so hopefully he can come back. Otherwise, I'm carrying this solo, which I guess is kind of cool for a while. I can host. Hopefully, John can come back. What I was showing is the Alltech Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel. Ale, which is 10% alcohol, I believe. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's 10%. I'm still looking. It is 10%. So I'm hoping that I can get more Terrapin beers which maybe is possible. John's back. I Were you here the whole time? Yeah, I, I said I took over hosting. Until you okay, came. good. Yeah, I got an error message that I've never seen before that said your stream is vulnerable to hacking. You are no longer in a safe space. And then there was a button that I clicked. It said back to safety. And I had, I've, I've never seen that message before. Okay, so I, I texted you, are we frozen? And then I was there by myself, so I was, Jeremy's face was still up. says, Jeremy, I guess I'm now in charge to continue. Until <laughs> but what I was showing you is this Alltech Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale, which is a 10% one, and I've never had it. But um, I have had that, yeah. Is it any good? I think it's one of the better pumpkin beers. Uh, it has a nice barrel presence. One thing, though, about that one, is it's pretty boozy. The ten percent is not masked very well. I think but, you find that in a lot of the all tech stuff, the ones yeah. from Kentucky. Their stuff tends to be on the boozy side, and it's the sign of a good brewer if they can tone that booziness down. And if right. they can't, they're going to lose points. I think the way I the way I rate anyway. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, if you're not used to barrel stuff and you're not a big fan of, I mean. 
I get I'm not it's not that you're not a fan of alcohol, but if if the taste of alcohol offends you, you know, you might be offended because they do not mask the alcohol very well. It's almost it's like the body for their beers is too light and it doesn't mask the alcohol because of the body. It's not to me, it's not so much the quality of the beer itself. It's that there needs to be more body to mask the alcohol. But the flavors are are on point with the Kentucky beers for me. I'll have to let you know how I feel about it after I taste it. Have I ever told you my six point story? I probably have not. Uh, you've told me a lot of six point stories, but I don't know if you've told me the six point story. I don't know. <laughs> this is a good one. When six point first started, they just did stuff only in kegs. They didn't have cans, you know, they just had kegs. And this was before they had any cans. And I went to this local place, Beercraft, and they were making an appearance. I think it was like their fifth or sixth anniversary. So we're going back to around, they started in 2004. So this is about 2010. So I'm there, and all the people from the company are there, and they were tasting their beers. And they had, and this was cool because I, at that point in 2010, I never had anything, a stout that was barrel aged. I never tasted one. I never had one. We're talking about 10 years ago. Um, I'd had stouts before, but never aged so they pour this and we drink it and it was only barrel aged for a couple of weeks so this was like a short end deal so it wasn't something where they were barrel aging it to put it into bottles or cans they were doing it to put it into a keg and i found out later that they had trouble putting whatever you know when you close a keg off you have to close it with some kind of um wax or i don't know how they close but they do it and anyway when they tap this keg they had a carbonation problem and the beer was shooting all over and they had to control it so they were able to control it they didn't lose all the beer but they poured it and i'll tell you the most amazing thing for the fact that it had been in for for such a short amount of time you could taste the alcohol the bourbon kind of taste and i really thought it was amazing because I never thought that you would be doing barrel aging. I'd never heard of it, whatever. So I've since tried many, but at this point for my first one, and the fact it was very short duration, it was amazing the amount of taste they got out for a really short period of time. You could taste it. Now it wasn't you know, gonna get a 99 or anything. I probably would have given it an 89, you know, like a B plus. But for right. what it did to me in the future, when I was able to try some of the different companies coming out with it, um, if you leave it in the barrel for six months, it makes a huge difference on the oaky taste you get and the different um, alcohol you can taste. And obviously, you know how I feel about Six Point. It's kind of like one of my favorite beers of all time. Because right. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting to try some Six Point beer. Um, Bumpy Road Brewery uh, is sending me one of the Master Blend right. along with some of his homebrew stuff. Uh, he made a stout that he named Trish the Dish, which is named after uh, Keep Sipping, her channel. She, you right. know, because I, she I, loves wine. I, I've been on with her. She's been right. on, so, been on a couple so of she, She's a big wine lover. So what Bumpy did was he made this stout and he infused wine into the stout. It's an imperial stout. I think it's 9.5% alcohol. So he's going to send out some bottles of that to people. And uh, he, he also got one of the six point master blends that he's sending me, which I'm super psyched about. Well, whenever, um, you, whenever you get it, John, we'll do an examination. Cause I, will. Four pack. I bought a four pack. I would buy more of it because I really find it to be really good. I finished the last one of the limited release ones. That was a little bit higher in alcohol. It was 13.8 when we had, I don't know if I did it on, maybe I did do it on stout Sunday. Maybe was there a stout Sunday that you missed? You know, well, yeah, there's been a couple where I haven't been able to do it, and Jay has. I think Jay uh, hosted, and I think I, I think I, it was before my trip to Florida, and I did it, and um, it was really good. I mean, I, the, the other one that, that Bumpy sent to you is a 13 percent, so by no means, you know, a, a small beer. It's a big beer, also, and I think you'll like it. Oh, okay. So that's actually, I was thinking nine and a half. I guess because of what you no, were. It's thir it's 13 percent. Okay. Wow. I mean, it's I'm sure it'll be right in my alley. It's four dollars for each twelve ounce can, so it's not cheap. But you're getting a thirteen percent beer, so you know it's not bad. You know, it's, it's not bad when you consider the price of the the CBS, the KBS, the right. Bourbon County, these other high end barrel aged right. stouts. It's actually a pretty good deal. 
right for sure um what what was the other what the other thing i was going to say so tomorrow um and i think i mentioned this before i may not have the interesting thing is there's going to be different people from different groups now i have a regular main group that comes every month and then i have beach club people who come to some and don't come to others and we're going to have some people who've never come to my house before a couple or at least one one who's never been here which is always fun and um some of my regular people are not coming but we're still i think you're gonna have 12 people which is a pretty big crowd you know yeah we have to open up our ta kitchen table to fit 12 people so um <laughs> and my daughter and her boyfriend are coming over for dinner her boyfriend does beer tastings with me Name yeah i actually got to meet you him got to meet you got to meet chris he's a man of few words but he's a good guy and um he comes my daughter works at the food co-op so she'll go to her squad and then she'll come and pick him up and and take him home which is nice and you get a chance and he's friendly because he knows most of the people from either here or at the beach club so it's funny we do these except in the summer and then during the summer we do them at the beach club with some different people who never come here and or who never come here to do the ones on thursday night but you'd have a good time because i tr i try to vary the styles that i do and for the most part, the people who bring beer vary the styles a lot. We'll get, you know, hazy IPAs, West Coast IPAs, some stouts, porters. I have for tomorrow, it's going to be very interesting, a passion fruit wheat from Vietnam, which I had last night. And I found it to be very interesting from Pasteur, P-A-S-T-E-U-R company. I never heard of them. I don't know who they are. Oh. But the food co-op had it. And I bought a couple of cans. So I'm going to have that. And the one I mentioned before, that collective arts, hazy one, I'm going to have. And when you have this big crowd of people with a lot, you, you have to at least have 24 ounces or else people don't get enough where they really can get a taste. Or do two 16-ounce cans where you have 32 ounces and then they get a little bit more. The females in the group drink a little bit less, so it makes it a little bit easier. But that's because they, you know, they can handle less, it seems. Right, yeah. No, typically they weigh less. Yeah, than the I've actually drank with women who could handle it, for sure. But the, in our group, for the most part, it's you know people who drink less alcohol. Right. Well, yeah, you'll have to. You know how the you'll definitely. I, have will, to send I you always to send it to you, and I give you. Know. And, and there are times when stuff you expect to do well do not, and times things you would expect not to do well do really well. So it's right. very hard to read how people are going to vote. But the good thing is when you have this many people, there's a correction in it because no matter how you view it, when let's say you're doing a beer tasting with four people, you get two people who hate it. And you're, and even if the other two people like it, the average is going to be low with 12 people. It averages out and yeah. um, it's fairer. Well, and you're still doing, um, and I know everybody out there that's watching may not know what we're talking about, but Michael's been doing Thursday night tastings with uh, friends that, that come over for a long time now, and it's really I, cool. I think, and um, I think we're going on three years already. Three yeah. years. And then this is not even including, I mean, you have a separate thing where you, that you do in the summer months where you do your beach club thing. Right. And those oh. are, those are, they're never weekly because you can't do it every week, but I would say probably three out of the four weekends we do something unless the weather inter you're in a beach club so if it's raining you really you know the people don't all come right. you can't do it but weather permitting i'd say we do during the course of the whole summer which is july 4th to labor day weekend we probably do 12 beer tastings during the summer okay. and um the ones in the summer can be a lot of people but it depends here um, the ones are usually well attended, but um, it depends. It's, it varies, and um, looks like tomorrow is going to be well attended. Now, sometimes people cancel at the last minute. You can't tell, but it, it, 12 people is what it looks like now. It was 14 last month, so, I mean, that was my record of all time. We will. Now, do you still um, – I got one question here. Then we'll, we'll go ahead and take it off air here after this, but – I was curious, do you still, if somebody has, like, say everybody rates a beer 
an eight or a nine, and then you have one person that gives it like a two or a three, do you still strike it off the record if it's a crazy number or yes. do you keep it? No. Yes, I still do it. And I and I'm even less tolerant than that. If the whole group rates it seven or more and somebody gives it a five, I strike the five. If it's more yeah. than two points below what the lowest person is, I strike it. And again, since I'm the, you know, maybe that's taking too much control, but <laughs> I, my feeling it again, I'm choosing two points. Now, obviously, if two people do that, it, let's say two people give it a five and all the numbers are high, then it stays in because that means that it's more than one person who did it. I right. consider one person a, an aberration. If there are two who both do it, then the average stays in and I don't strike it. But if there's one person, and it's happened where somebody gave something a three and everybody else is giving it seven, eights, and nines. And this one woman who is who now has moved, so we won't see her again, but she didn't like the style, gave it a three. And I couldn't let her number stand because it was just too off what the rest of the group did. Some people would say you should count it anyway because it's fair, but I don't know. It's just almost like you have to have some kind of standard well, I like no, I like what you're doing because one person that doesn't necessarily like the style or that maybe doesn't know as much about beer that gives something that low of a rating compared to the rest of the group, it shouldn't affect the overall average when everybody else thinks it's it's an excellent beer. You shouldn't because a two, when you have a small group of people, six to ten people, and one person rates it that low, it'll significantly decrease the sure. overall. It can, it can lose a whole point, I think. It's, I, let's say, yeah, I let's think say so. the average is let's say the average is seven, and somebody gives it a two. It could end up getting into the high, low sixes because of that too. So I do eliminate that. But for the most part, in all the times I've ever done it, I can count it on one hand the amount of times I've actually struck anybody's number out. So okay. it's happened very. It ha it's happened very few times. Well, that's good. That means that most of the people that are coming over and tasting these beers are experienced enough to. To kind of be able to rate appropriately, even if they're right. not necessarily into a particular style. Right. And even if they don't like it, if they admit it's crafty, they're willing to give it a little bit of a raise up and not just, you know, say, I'm saying it's bad because I don't like the style. So I try right. to, whatever. So, John, we're going to be on Stout Sunday. I will be there. And All right. um, thanks for hosting tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. This, this was your idea. So it's kind of, Spur of the moment, but I'm glad we did it. Gave me an excuse to go buy some okay, good craft so you, beer. So keep in touch with me, and I'll fill you in with my numbers tomorrow. And um, I'll see you on Sunday. All right. We'll go ahead and wrap it up. Thanks to everybody for watching. I um, hope everybody has a great night. And until next time, cheers. Enjoy your weekend, John. Yes, you too.